top of the day, beautiful people. Top of the day, Betwabu, Betwabu, House of Father. I'm House of the Father, you House of the Father. Betwabu, Bet El, Bethel, the House of El, El Limo, Elohim. Same thing, we're talking about the same God, same Yah. Betwabu, Betwabu. All right, beautiful people, it is the first day of the new year. We are in 2020. 2020. I remember when we were still in high school. We used to think when we got to the year 2020, actually, matter of fact, we used to think when we got to the year 2000, we would have flying cars and stuff. Granted, they got some, but it's not the normal thing. You know, you got maybe one here, one there, and they ain't released it to the general public. They still doing stuff sickly. But we still driving around here in cars like we were the last 80,000 something years. However long we've been driving cars, we're still driving cars. All right. Today. We keep going. We're in Leviticus 10, 11, and 12. Like I said, it is Wednesday, January the 1st, 2020, day 34 of year two of us reading through the books of instruction and the prophets. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here straight away. Leviticus chapter 10. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before Yahuwah, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from Yahuwah and devoured them, and they died before Yahuwah. The master said unto Aaron, This is it that Yahuwah spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come not me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. I mean, you, you just seen your sons get burnt up. Going in there, offering strange fire. Going there thinking just because you've been anointed priest or to the Levitical priest, because you can go, Levitical priest, so you can go in here and do whatever you want to do. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and grab some of this fire up in here. Yeah, the next thing you know, you did. Aaron probably was like, like, it probably happened so fast. It's like, bro, you tried it. Like he said, Yahuwah has commanded the thing to be according to this way. And it said, and Aaron held his peace. He better have held his peace. Okay. Then Master and Aaron said, I'm going to read that again. I'm reading it again, y'all. Verse 3. I know I just read it, but I'm reading it again. The Master and Aaron, the Master said unto Aaron, this is that, the, I'm sorry. I'm trying to read too fast. Okay, then Massa said unto Aaron, This is that that Yahuwah spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come not me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. So it was Moses or Massa that said it, and Aaron had it, held his peace. And Massa called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Massa had said. And Massa said unto Aaron and to Eleazar and unto Ithamar his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of ye so lily, bewail the burning which Yahuwah hath kindled. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest you die. For the anointing oil of Yahuwah is upon you, and they did according unto, unto the word of Massa. So if you haven't paying attention, Yahuwah had given them strict instructions on what could be done while they were in their priestly garments. He said, God, they listen, y'all don't want to do that. Because the same thing that happened to your brother is going to happen to you. The anointing oil of Yahuwah is upon you, so stay put. Let the rest of the family go be well done, but until you're done with your service... You need to stay here and follow protocol. So they said, um, okay. And they stayed. And Yahuwah spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when thou go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations, and, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, between clean and unclean. And that ye may teach the children of Yisraelili all the statutes which Yahuwah hath spake unto them by the hand of Massa. And Massa spoke unto Aaron, unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his sons that were left. Take the meat offering that remaineth of the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. 
and ye shall eat it in the holy place, because it is thy due, and thy sons do of the sacrifices of Yahuwah made by fire, for so I am commanded. And the wave breast and the heave leg shall ye eat in a clean place, thou and thy sons and thy daughters with thee, for they be for they be thy due, and thy sons do, which are given out of the sacrifices of peace offerings of the children of Yisolili. Hey to the baby. Well, she is a baby. She's my baby. And Master diligently sought the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burnt. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, which left alive, saying, Wherefore have you not eaten the sin offering in the holy place, seeing it is most holy? And Yahuwah hath given it to you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement for them before Yahuwah. Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. Ye hey, guys, hey, look, I'm going to take that. Ye should have indeed have eaten it in the holy place as I have commanded. One second. Hey, uh-uh, uh, -uh, -uh. Y'all go out there with that. Go. Go ahead. Take that truck, Bella. Jace, go take it out there. If y'all gonna play with it, y'all play with it out there. You make too much noise. Oh, it's, um, my toy. It's probably upstairs. Y'all go check for it. Go upstairs and look for it. Take time. Take time. Verse 18. <clears throat> oh gosh, they found it. <laughs> okay. Verse 18. Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. You should have indeed have eaten it in the holy place as I have commanded. And Aaron and said unto Master, Behold, this day they have offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before Yahuwah, and such things have befallen me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of Yahuwah? And when Master heard that, he was content. Because remember, you, it, you can't leave it overnight. Chapter 11 of Leviticus. <clears throat> and Massa spake, I'm sorry, and Yahuwah spake unto Massa and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of ye, Sulili, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parteth the hoof, and is cloven footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divideth the hoof. As the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divideth the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh, of their flesh, Ye shall not eat, and their carcasses shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. <clears throat> These shall ye eat of them that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the water, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas, and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you, like catfish. Catfish is unclean. I mean, it's a whole bunch, but I just chose it because it was the first thing. I did. And as soon as I found out catfish was unclean, I stopped eating it. I'm just like, oh, bro, Father, forgive me. We've been eating abominable things. I mean, granted, I was eating pork, too. But when I found out, I stopped eating it, you know. <clears throat> it's been a while since I had some pork. I mean, it's been years. Okay. Verse 11, they shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins, nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. And these are they which ye shall have in an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, the ossifrage, and the os osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind. And the owl, and the night hawk, and the cacao, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the stork, and the heron after her kind, and the 
lap wig and the back. All the fowls that creep going upon all fours shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing that goes upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap withal upon the earth. Even these, them ye may eat. The locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. And as for these, shall and for these ye shall be unclean. Whosoever touches touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until the even, until the evening. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. The carcass of every beast which divideth the hoof and is not cloven footed nor cheweth the cud are unclean unto you. Every one that touch them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws, <clears throat> cats, dogs, any um, of my uh, oriental people watching. If it got paws, you ain't supposed to be eating it. <clears throat> Among all, and whatso, verse 27, and whatsoever goeth upon his paws. Among all manner of beasts that go on all fours, those are unclean unto you. Whosoever touches their carcass shall be unclean until the evening. And he that beareth the carcass, carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean unto you. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse. And the tortoise after his kind. You know, it's a it's a um uh, it's a verse here. It's an um it's an Isaiah. Every time I read it I crack up laughing. It's not funny, but I just thought about it when it was talking about the mouse and the tortoise. It talks about in the day of judgment, you know, the um they call it like the day of y'all, the day of the Lord or the like the second coming, but it's not the second coming. I don't know where that term came from really. It's but anyway, the scripture says that for those, he said, those are my people who, I mean, and I'm summing it up. He said, those are my people who practice righteousness, but they sit behind, the, what is it? They sit behind a tree like eating swine is just like them eating a the mouse. He said, I'm going to get them too. You know, so every, when I read it, you can read it in different versions. And I just crack up with every verse because essentially it's talking about people that's like, they're acting like they're living a lifestyle of holiness, but in their private time, they're doing all kind of abominable things, whether they're eating swine or they eat mice or, or whatever, whatever it is, or it could be an action or something that they're doing. He said, you're not, he said, I see you. He said, you be hiding behind you. He said, I see you. I'm going to get you just like I'm going to get the sinner, you know? So, I mean, it's not funny. It's, it's a sobering statement, you know, and it make you want to double check your life and consider your ways and make sure, you know, I ain't saying nobody perfect, but you can be, you just strive to be perfect. You can live a life consciously without sin, not saying that you're not going to make a mistake, but you can live a life where you don't purposely set out to sin every day. Now, you may make a mistake, oh, I'm sorry, sister, brother, or whoever at work, you may do something, or something happens and anger catches you off guard, you know. I'm not talking about those type of things, because you can, you know, and if your heart is to do what's right, we normally quickly make amends. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that, or we may have to think about it for a day, we had to go back and apologize. I'm not talking about those type of people who normally, they come back and get it right within a sh very short period of time but I'm talking about people who make it a lifestyle of portraying that they're living one way and behind closed doors they're completely living another he said you I'm coming for you I'm coming for you yeah so it really makes you want to consider your ways all right hey listen children tiny people y'all gotta quiet it down y'all done board every the dollhouse the Batman and the truck and all them loud yeah you gotta chill out okay I'm almost done. All right. Verse 30. And the fairy and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole, these are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever does touch them, when they be dead, shall be unclean until the evening. Even upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall. Hey, 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 hey. Shh. Hey, hey, Yes. 
Okay, listen, y'all. It's more than enough toys right there. Um, car. Okay, go get your car. Go get your car. Quit stomping, heavy foot. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall, it shall be unclean. Whether it be any vessel of wood or raiment or skin or sack, whatsoever vessel it be in, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the evening, so it shall be cleansed. And every earthen vessel, wherein to any of them that falleth, whatsoever it is in, shall be unclean, and you shall break it. Yes, baby. Yeah, I'm dark in there. But TT is in there, so it's not that dark. Just cut on, cut on the bathroom light and open the door so you can see. Turn on the light in the bathroom, open up the door all the way, it'll give you light over there to the toy chest. Um, this is a toy chest. Okay, well, you and Jason go together. Go together. Go by twos. Two. Two, y'all go. Y'all can watch out for each other. Watch each other's back. But you guys are something. Verse 34. Of all the meat which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh shall be unclean, and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. And everything whereupon any part of their carcass falleth shall be unclean, whether it be oven or ranges for pots, they shall be broken down, for they are unclean, and shall be unclean unto you. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit wherein is plenty of water shall be clean, but that which touches their carcass shall be unclean. If any part of their carcass carcass fall upon the sowing seed which is to be sown it shall be clean but if any water be put upon the seed any part of their carcass falleth thereon it shall be unclean unto you if any beast of which ye may eat die he that touches the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the evening and he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening he also that Beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goeth upon his belly, whatsoever goeth upon all four, or whatsoever hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, them shall ye not eat, <clears throat> for they are an abomination. And we know people eat all this stuff he say not to eat. He said, but for his people that are set apart, he said, look, y'all can't do any of this stuff. He said, this is nasty. It's an abomination. He said, the other nations may do it, but you are not to follow their ways. Listen, my people, this is this how we roll, okay? Here are the instructions. If you're not sure, just go back and check. You shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall you make yourselves unclean with them that ye should be defiled thereby. For I am Yahuwah, your God. Ye, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am Yahuwah that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore <clears throat> excuse me, be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beast, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Last chapter for today, y'all, Leviticus chapter 12. And Yahuwah spake unto Master, saying, Speak unto the children of Yisraeli, saying, If a woman hath conceived seed, and born a man-child, <clears throat> See, let me take a sip of water. Mm. Okay, sorry. Okay, <clears throat> I started with. And Yahuwah spake unto Master, saying, Speaking to the children of Yisulili, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and bore a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of separation, for her infirmity shall she be unclean. And then the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And we know here, you go to the hospital, they're doing that on like the second day after the male child is born. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days or thirty-three days. She shall touch no hallowed thing or no holy thing nor come into the sanctuary till the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child or a female child, 
then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days, or thirty-six days. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest, who shall offer it before Yahuwah and make an atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law for her that have born a male or a female. I'm not, I don't understand yet why. I mean, I can understand because, for one, she's bleeding. So, it, while a woman is on her cycle or she's bleeding or even a man, they're considered unclean and they're not to, you know, touch any holy thing. They're to be separated during those times. But I'm not sure why. I mean, I don't understand the language of that just yet. I need to be able to translate that from the original language and get, like, a full understanding of why. Like, she had a baby, something natural that you were commanded for us to do. Why would she have to offer a sin offering for that? I've heard some theories. They don't sit right with me, you know. So I'm going to keep looking until you who is like, reveals it to me. He said, and this is why. Because it'll completely make sense. And it'll make sense everywhere it can be applied, you know. So nobody's really given a good... um explanation yet they they really haven't okay um verse eight and if she be not able to bring a lamb then she shall bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons the one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering so spill it on the floor and the priest shall make an atonement for her and she shall be clean and that is our reading for today they starting to get into stuff too hold on i got you all right beautiful people i gotta go they into everything already so today is wednesday january the first 2020 it was day 34 year two and we read, we read leviticus 10 11 and 12 and we read about Aaron's two sons when we first got started who offered the strange fire before you who would they figure they could do what they wanted to do i mean you pull short and real quick, like, give me your breath. Let's go. Um, so, if you missed it, go back and read it. Listen to it uh, however you want to go through it. Just, you know, so you read, read ahead. Go back if you miss some days. All right, y'all. I need to bless you and get out of here. Hey, Bella. Shush, shush. Wait a minute. May you who will bless us and keep us. May you who will make his face to shine upon us and lift his countenance upon us and be gracious unto us in our households. And may he give us his salama or his peace. All right, y'all. I love y'all. And I will see you in the morning, bright and early, 7 a.m. Peace.